Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I just jumped in my car and I'm going to be heading over to one of my ASIC mining sheds. That's right. I have two crypto mining sheds dedicated to mining that I've built over the last year. I haven't been over to this one in about two weeks now because it's been snowing off and on and I haven't had an opportunity to get over there. But I thought, hey, if I'm heading over there, let's record a video. So in this video today, we're gonna take a look at my shed and talk about things that I've learned and worked well and mistakes I've made and some changes that I'm gonna have to make coming up here in the next few months in preparation for spring and summer. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at Quantum Expeditions. Bitcoin mining can be incredibly profitable, but as most of you know, doing it yourself can be complicated and risky. Unpredictable costs, equipment failures, and high energy costs make it very difficult for regular people to achieve consistent gains, let alone scaling up. Quantum Expeditions makes it easy for retail investors like yourself to participate in the vast opportunities of large-scale Bitcoin mining without ever leaving your house. Join a community where you can contribute your knowledge and feedback or learn from the experience of others. Now, for a limited time, you can invest directly in the company through an exclusive Regulation CF crowdfund and earn from the future growth in the industry. Quantum Expeditions just completed their first deployment of Bitcoin miners, three weeks ahead of schedule. So now is an excellent time to get involved. Come check out the Quantum Expeditions link in the description below. All right, here we are. Just pulled up, still a decent amount of snow on the ground. Uh, it snowed, I don't know, a little over a week ago. Uh, so our ASIC shed is kind of up against a business here on the backside. Uh, so we can kind of get away with some of this noise here. This is not at my house. This is at Mr. Electrician's house. If you guys aren't familiar, check it out. We got some birds over here hanging out. I think our shed's helping to keep them warm. Look at this. The heat from our shed is, look, there's no snow here, just blown over. Hopefully keeping these guys warm right now. What's up, chickens? Quite a bit of them, actually. All right, so here is our shed, guys. This is a 12 by 12 shed. Uh, it's 15 to 20 years old. I kind of refurbished the inside of it to make it work for us. It's vinyl, so we ended up replacing the wall on the left side, which is our exhaust, and then same thing on the right side here, which is our intake. Looks like things have held up recently. Here's our intake side. Got a little bit of snow up in here in our gutter. We did install that uh, to help with some of the water runoff so that it wouldn't run off right in front of the intakes and get pulled in. We got some uh, gable vents. They're a blessing and a curse. Uh, you know, there are filters in those gable vents there that we'll have to clean come uh, warmer weather. These vents up top do not have any filters at all. You know, hands all dirty from them. They are just straight through because I found I needed some straight through airflow uh, in this guy. You guys want to see something funny? Do you see this line here? <laughs> That's my burial cable. That's the burial cable running to the house. Look at that. There's no snow on top of it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, because all the power that's running through there. All right, uh, let's go ahead and head inside. All right, let's head inside here. Try to bang off our feet getting in. It's a little loud. All right. A little different than the outside. Let me go ahead and close the door. We'll go on the intake side. I'm gonna to try to talk a little bit louder. All right, so we are inside of our ASIC shed. We're running two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 ASICs total in here. Quite a variety. Uh, I'll give you guys a quick 360 degree tour here. There's the intakes we were talking about. Network, power, electrical, and our exhaust side here. All right, so it's about, it's a warmer day outside. It's about 35 Fahrenheit outside right now. And the shed's pretty comfortable inside here. So I'm using these devices. I've been really happy with them. These are Govee sensors. So I have like one here, one over here. I have one over by the network and electrical panel. Uh, one over here by the electrical equipment. 
and then I have one over on the exhaust side here. So if we walk back over, I got this on my phone uh, and I took a screenshot, I'll pop it up to make it a little bit easier for you guys to read. So on our intake side, it's, um, let's see here, on the right side over here, it's about 71 degrees Fahrenheit. But over here, it's about 77. And you can actually see, look, it says about 80. Now, on my network side over here, it's 82. And my PDUs over here, it's about 90 Fahrenheit. My back white one over there, it is uh, 90 Fahrenheit. And then I have one more up there and I'll explain why in a second. And that one is 95 Fahrenheit. So some oddities there. So first off, I have my ASICs fans turned down a lot. I have them turned down because I want the heat, the exhaust heat to recirculate through and come over to the intake side because there's been some really cold temperatures recently and it's gotten really cold on this side and I really don't want that. I want my ASICs to kind of almost keep a, a, a normal temperature through all the seasons. So I'm a lot, you know, I don't want it as much as you might think, oh, computer equipment or, or you know, circuit boards, let's have that at, you know, 20 or 30 or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It's worked out for stability to keep the air recirculating. It also helps out with the moisture. That hot air comes through, really gets rid of a lot of that moisture there. So on a day like today, it works out nicely. So I've adjusted those. I also have them adjusted as well. They automate. Uh, these are actually from AC Infinity. These are the best cooling fans out there for this type of build and setup. If you have a room or you have a, a basement or you have a shed or a warehouse, AC Infinity inline fans, they t wire to a temperature probe and then you can automate this. These are wireless, so I can control these. Every night before bed, I come in and, and uh, review these every morning, making sure they're running right. You could adjust them to say when it hits this temperature inside, do this and vice versa. So these are some of the best. I have not found better fans for any of these setups, just like this here. So we're running four of these in here. And we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna be replacing these with AC Infinity, but I'll talk about that more in a few minutes here. So this guy up top here, mistake, not a mistake, but something I've learned. So this shed is the first shed I've had that is, I guess we'll call this an A-frame. Some of you guys may know the better verbiage for it. My other shed's a lean-to shed. This shed goes up and over. Well, when we built this, one of the things we had talked about was do I need to cap off? You see right here on the supports? Do I need to put plywood across here? to kind of cap off the ceiling to stop the air from rising, maybe. So when I was going through the temperatures, remember up there, 95 degrees. So there's actually a roof vent. You can actually see it. It's that silver white up there. I actually filled that. I put the in place and then I filled it. And so what's happening, and I saw this in the summertime too, is my hot air is rising faster then my exhaust fans are able to get rid of that hot air. So my concern is spring and summer, what are we gonna do? Because I have even more ASICs in here, even more heat, even more power. So some air is getting trapped up there and it's, it's, all, it's coming over to our intake side on its own, even without me adjusting those fans. So I need to do two things. Let me go outside, I'll show you the first thing I'm thinking about. All right, we're on the back side. Look, a window. Backside, there you go, you wanna see the view? All right, so on the back side here, these are our exhaust fans. As I talked about, these, this was all vinyl, vinyl on the exhaust and the intake. We actually replaced it with plywood uh, so that it could support these exhaust fans. One of the things I'm thinking about, these are the T14s, 14 inches. I did need to adjust and move the studs over and box these out. I'm thinking about upgrading these to T16s. AC Infinity has T16s. I have these in my other shed, which is half the size of this, and they are insane. They do, like, they are so much stronger. So I thought T14s would be enough, but I'm definitely learning that they might not be, and I might need to pull more air and crank these up. So that's something I'm looking at. If you guys are in any situation, 
and you guys are looking to buy one of these. I've partnered with AC Infinity. I've been partnered with them for almost three years now. I will not buy anything else for uh, cooling when it comes down to mining. Their inline fans are amazing. Uh, their grow tents are great. I've used those as well. And this is my second shed with these fans. I just under spec this. That's on me. That's a mistake I made. So if you guys are interested, go over to acinfinity.com. If you use the promo code, the hobbyist miner, it will actually give you guys 15% off your entire order, which is awesome. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing is upgrading these to the T16s. That's an option that I'm thinking about. Now, as you increase this exhaust, you know, it's gonna create a negative airflow situation. So if we walk back around front, you know, all of that is pulling from these vents here. So you have to have enough intake to counter the amount of negative pressure. So that's something that I am considering. The other thing I'm thinking about doing, let's walk around here. What's up birds? The other thing I'm thinking about doing is on my exhaust side, I know it's a little hard to see, I'm gonna back up. Not on, not right here, but on this next part. So you can kind of see the roof vent up there. Right on this side of that roof vent, I'm thinking about, do I do like something like, sorry, these birds are loud. Hi. Do I do something like some roof vents up there? Um, or those like attic fan type of deals I'm thinking about doing, you know, do I do something to, remove that air because I don't think I, I don't think that even increasing these is going to stop that airflow it's going to stop that hot air from naturally rising so right now it's pocketing up top there do I go ahead and put something up there I love to hear from you guys I have no experience with that but it's something I'm thinking about doing uh, my only concern is if I if I do a fan of some kind like those attic fans are the motors gonna get burnt out on those because the negative airflow that these are pulling out is gonna kill those fans. So maybe it's vents, you know? What do you guys think? I'd love some feedback. Leave it directly down below. All right, so last few things. If you guys are brand new to the channel, as I talked about networks over here, we ran burial cable over from the house. We have 150 amps we're working with from the house over here to a sub panel. Uh, what else? We have a workstation over here that I use for working on the equipment. Just a computer back behind here. Oh, those Gobi devices, they all come back to this guy and this guy is hooked up via wireless. Uh, we're using Google Mesh for our wireless there. Uh, this is like your 60 second tour. Power cables go up there. Ethernet all runs over, goes over to our patch panel. And then we also have the meter boxes set up over here. Uh, we're, gonna, we're so close, look at that, 56, 56, 57. We are all, we are like maxed out pretty much uh, on our power. And then the best PDU, honestly, these are the best PDUs in the industry. Altair Tech, check these out. These are awesome. I love these PDUs. Built-in breaker right there. They do have a meter right on them too. And they do your C19, C20, C13, C14. These are great, especially for ASIC mining. Not as much for the GPUs, you only have about four, but for ASIC mining, these things are absolutely awesome. All right, uh, what else we got before we say goodbye? What do we got in here? L7s, KS2, uh, S19K Pro, another S19K Pro over there. Uh, 100 terahash S19J, S21, M60, and two E9 Pros in here. So Bitcoin, Caspa, and Ethereum Classic. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap things up. I bet you guys have a boatload of questions. This is that video. Leave all your questions, your comments, your concerns, your recommendation, leave them down below. I'm gonna try to answer every single one. If it's on cost or a decision I made, why I did this, why I did that, why you didn't do this, Comment down below. I want to hear from you guys. All right, that's going to wrap things up, guys. I appreciate you guys joining me today. I'll see you guys next time.